Hello, my brothers and sisters. I bid you all greetings in the name of our Heavenly Father, Master Yahuwah. And also, I greet you in the name of His only begotten Son, our Savior, Master Yahushua, through their precious spirit. And uh, I'm just, I'm very thrilled today that our Father, my King, has allowed me to be alive especially in the times that we're living in. We're basically in the times of great trouble. We're living in times of great pride. We're living in times of great evil. And so those of us who are of his congregation, those of us who are not affiliated with those who basically are children of the enemy, but we are the ones that our Heavenly Father has called us to come out and be separate. Not to treat people evil, but to be separate from those things which are against him. And as he leads us to open our hands to those who are in darkness, but if they continue in their way and they do not want to hear his gospel, they do not want to hear his true message, then, my friends, we are to shake the dust of our feet and we are to pray for them and to keep moving forward. As I'm granted to continue in our Heavenly Father and our King's teaching, not my own, you all, as far as my fellow peers in the Master, are to examine and try the Spirit to make sure that it's of Him and His Son. And so, as I'm led to continue, in their teaching as far as the way of life and how we as his congregation, we are to truly, sincerely be ready to not only defend his good news, but to actually learn it, to apply it, and to consistently live it out. And if we've done anything wrong or we make errors, then we are to repent of our evil ways and to keep moving forward. So we all are to learn of the way of life. And see, a lot of people today, they're very confused, as many of us have came out of confusion. And we are still going through levels of it as our Heavenly Father and His Son is elevating us, bringing us out of all wrongdoing. Many people look at the things of the scriptures as being religious or as far as they have a religion, please God my father, my king, they have a religious mind frame and they are trying to analyze these things as if they're all of religion. But our heavenly father, my king has given all of us a way of life. This is something beyond when people are, are around you as far as a crowd is concerned. This is something that we all are to take in and are to do our best to conform to living day in and day out. So I will be reading, of course, from the scriptures, but I will be continuing in what is known as the Didache. And those of you who may be familiar with it, again, that is the Greek word for the word teaching. So those of you, please open up, for those of you who have it, or whether you go online and look at different translations that are there, that way you can compare and contrast. And so I'll be continuing in the Dake in chapter 2, starting at verse 1. And it says, and the second rule of the training is this. You will not murder. Now, let's stop there for a moment. This is very interesting because a lot of people who say they are Christians today, a lot of people who say they are uh, Jewish, or a lot of people who say that they're um, Muslims, they say that they are submitted to the will of Allah, as they say, a lot of us really need to take time. And for those of you, if you have to write it down, write these things down and really take note as our Father can guide us on this journey. Because the way of life, these are things that we are to basically not do. This is a way of life. Do you understand? So notice how as it reads in the Didache, it says, you will not 
murder. Now, let's go into the scriptures and we're going to compare and contrast and find out if those in ancient antiquity that learned these ancient principles, if these things were not in the scriptures. Do you understand? So let's go back to Exodus. Exodus, the 20th chapter. Many of you know where I'm led to go, and that's good. It shows that you're paying attention. So let's go to Exodus, the 20th chapter. And let's glance at the 13th verse. And, and many of you know it as the Ten Commandments. This is what it says. This is what our Heavenly Father through His Son spoke to our ancestors in ancient times. He says, Thou or you shall not kill. Now that's powerful. And in these times that we're living in, my brothers and sisters, those of you who are scattered in all the different uh, countries in the world, you look around and you see many people who profess that they are believers of our Heavenly Father. Many of us, you know, we all know, many of us have said God. And so people say that they are believers. But according to his word, notice how it says you shall not kill. Do you understand? Now, that's not taken out of the context of defending, because we know when we read the scriptures, our Heavenly Father, because you have many people who will say, well, that's a contradiction. Why did he command certain people in an ancient times to destroy other nations? Well, you have to understand there's a difference between uh, defending the things of our Heavenly Father as far as his righteousness is concerned. And as far as pre Please God, my father, my king, premeditating, basically you're premeditated to go and slay or destroy an individual in cold blood. Do you understand? So there's a difference between the two actions as far as the intent and the motivation and inspiration behind the act. So we have to be willing to judge righteous judgment in these matters. So notice how we go into the Torah or the law and it says here, you shall not kill. So when our ancestor, the great prophet, came, represented our heavenly father to, and his son to the, the uh, ancient Israel, he proclaimed this truth to the people. That they were not to be a congregation of murderers. And we have governments today who pick up the Bible and they read from the scriptures. And we have those in authority who pick up the Bible. And it was those in ancient times during slavery and, and even during um, many different captivities when other countries would come in with the Bible and basically do evil and wickedness. Did they not murder? Do we not have a nation of people who are murderers today, but yet they put their hands on the scriptures? Yet they say that they're the believers of our Heavenly Father and His Son. So this is something of the true way of life for those of us who are truly his congregation. Remember what he told our ancestor, Kapha, as we know as Peter. He said that upon this rock, I will build my congregation. And of course, and later on, as far as translations, we have the word church there. But what he was saying is that he was going to build his congregation. And that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. See, our, our Messiah came to build his congregation. But yet we have all these organizations out here who claim that they're of him. And that's not so. So listen, my brothers and sisters. Now, let's look at, as, as I'm led, thank you, my father, my king. Go to, see here. Let's see here. Let's go to, actually, let's stay in Exodus for the moment. Go to the, the next chapter, Exodus, the 21st chapter. And please, let's look at the 12th verse. Listen to this, please. It says, he that smite, smiteth or strikes a man so that he die shall be surely Put to death. Do you see this? Our Heavenly Father is speaking of the intent of someone 
who is going to basically have the urge to go out and kill and murder and does not have the value of human life. Do you understand? Listen to verse 13. It says, and if a man lie not in wait, but the Almighty deliver him into his hand, then I will appoint you a place where he shall flee. Again, as my father, my king, gave me their wisdom to tell you, it was based upon the intent behind it. Because as you read the scriptures, those who opposed our Heavenly Father, they were dealt with. Those who stood against our Heavenly Father and his army, he commanded the children of Yahshua to do away with. So do not misunderstand as far as the scriptures is concerned. So look at verse 13 again. It says, and if, so that means it's conditional. And if a man lie not in wait. So he's talking about the intent. If, if the individual is not trying to premeditate the murder or the act in the evil way. He says, and if a man lie not in wait, but the Almighty deliver him into his hand, then I will appoint you a place where he shall flee. Do not think that our Heavenly Father cannot carry out his judgment through an individual because he can do that. He's doing it even now. Many people are just blind to the fact. You understand? Look at verse 14. But if, that's conditional now, but if a man come presumptuously upon his neighbor to slay him with guile, you shall take him from my altar that he may die. Do you see this? Listen. And he that smite or he that strike his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. So our Heavenly Father is not just given the precept of murder. He's also dealing with the intent of those individuals who murder or who decide to murder. And we're living in a time where you have people out here who are murdering their parents. They have no respect anymore. We're living in a generation that is much darker than, than previous generations, even though it was evil during that time. Thank you, my father, my king. But we are living. Those of you who are keen and you're understanding and you're really taking note and you're watching, you can see that something is wrong. There's something that's dark, very dark that's upon the earth. Where people today, they have no value for human life. You see this, my family. Let's go and look at what the, what the masters say. Go to Matthew, the fifth chapter. Let's go to the new covenant. So there's many of you who beg to differ about the words of our master. But let's understand that he taught the righteousness of the law, the righteousness of the Torah. See, those of you who are confused in, in what is known, is known by many names, whether it be the Tanakh or whether people call it the Old Covenant, however people want to uh, word it. But what you all have to understand is that in order to understand the truth, we have to rely on the master's interpretation of the things that were written down. When you all learn to focus on his interpretation that was given to him by his heavenly father, if you can focus on that and grasp that and realize that he didn't teach against the ancient principles, but he gave the true understanding of it and called us to a higher level pertaining to it, then you'll be able to grow in revelation and understanding. Go to, thank you, my, my masters, for your, your wisdom. Again, Matthew, the fifth chapter. And let's look at verse 21. Listen to what our king says. He says, you have heard that it was said by them of old time. You shall not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Do you see this? Thank you, my master, Yahushua. See, he was the one. Notice how when he's speaking to the audience, he's reminding them and pointing them to what I was just led by their power to read to you previously. He's dealing with the commandment, you shall not kill or murder. And he's also dealing with the judgment pertaining to murder as far as the intent of those who are wicked and chose to do that act. 
Do you see this, my family? Now listen carefully. Verse 22. He says, but I say unto you. Now let's stop for a moment. Because you have many people who misunderstand what our king is saying. As, as I made this, this error as well. Until our father king had to discipline me as well. So I'm not coming to you as if I'm speaking above you, my brothers and sisters. But our father king had to discipline me and, and teach me properly. Now listen carefully. A lot of people misunderstand what our master is saying. And if you're not careful, you would think that he is trying to override. You understand? As far as the precept and the commandment, as far as murder is concerned. But what he's getting ready to do by his heavenly father speaking through him. You understand? He's getting ready to expound on that very principle. Listen carefully. He says, but I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, you fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. You have some translations that says Gehenna. And so what he's dealing with, now he's dealing with the thick, please God and master, so that way you and your father will be manifested to your people. He's dealing with the intents that can birth forth murder. Thank you, my father, my king. He's notice how he's dealing, he's dealing with the commandment, but now he's dealing with the intent that can actually birth forth the act of killing someone. No one is just going to kill and there is nothing inside them that triggers them to do so. Do you understand? Insanity must be birthed forth. It has to come out of someone, an individual, in order to not have any value for human life. You understand my family? So notice how our master is dealing with the issue. And how we are to be very careful not to allow ourselves to be filled with anger to where we begin to not only speak out death to someone or to disrespect them to where we're murdering or as people say today, assassinate their character. You, you know, many of you are familiar with that jargon and that terminology. So when you have, thank you, my father, my king, we have a lot of people who begin to speak forth hatred. It's only a matter of time that these things can manifest to where you will actually be prepared to murder someone in cold blood. Those of you who are living in the time now who have your social medias, look on your social medias. I'm not going to, I'm not led to call out the names of these specific, these uh, specific social medias. You all who are well informed know exactly what I am led to say to you. And as you look and survey people's comments, you will see the murderous intent that is being uh, typed into people's inboxes. And as you look on the comment sections, you can see the murderous intent everywhere you go. Has not my father, my king, had me to speak something that's right to you? I'm sure many of you agree. So now let's go. So we see that the ancient these ancient Christians, these ancient anointed ones, they understood that murder was evil and that they were not to do that. This was a way of life for them that they were to abstain and to not get to a point where they became murderous people. People who wanted to murder. You understand? Going back to the docket, look at this carefully. Let's look at something It says here, going back to the docket, our father, our king has led me to read these things to where we can actually dissect these sins. Do you understand? To dissect these evil practices that's being promoted in this day that we're living in today, as it was in the ancient world. It says here. So we, so we know it says you will not murder. Now, listen carefully. You will not commit adultery. 
That's powerful, isn't it? And for those of you who are led to watch and will be watching as our Father King allows it to go out to you, you will notice that we're living in times where adultery is everywhere, isn't it? You see it on TV. You see it on social media. Can you understand now why many of the ancient anointed ones were murdered? Why they were killed? Why they were hated in the ancient world. Do you see this? Listen carefully. So he says, you will not commit adultery. Go back to Exodus, the 20th chapter. Exodus, the 20th chapter. And let's glance at the 14th verse. It says here, as our father and king spoke to the prophet, he spoke to the children of Yahshua. It says, you shall not commit adultery. And we're living in dark times now because adultery is considered lawful and right. See, the problem is we haven't been taught properly of what the congregation of the Messiah was taught. Master Yahushua, you know, many people say, Jesus, they say, well, Jesus loves everybody. And what, let me correct you as I'm led. Our Master Yahushua, he values human life. Him and his father, Father Yahuwah, they value human life. And they love what they created. But they hate what man has allowed the devil to corrupt them with and what they have become. Do you see this? Master Yahushua is not an adulterer. He doesn't like that. So even though people say, well, Christ, or they say Jesus or whatever understanding they say, they'll say, well, he loves the Lord. He loves everybody. But we have to understand what you're not speaking is the something that can be added to that as far as he loves, but you don't really talk about what he hates and what his father hates. And we we are being taught, collectively speaking, the masses of people in churches and in and in uh, different areas that. It's okay. Come as you are. Thank you, my father, my king. So we see what our father feels about it as we go into the Torah, the law. That we will not commit adultery. Correct. Let's go back to Matthew. Let's go back to the master. Because a lot of you say that you follow him. Go back to Matthew, the fifth chapter, please. Matthew, the fifth chapter. And let's look at the 27th verse. Listen what he says to his audience during that time. He says, you have heard that it was said by them of old time. You shall not commit adultery. Do you see how he's pointing back? To what our ancestors received when our heavenly father spoke through his son. He spoke it to the children of Yahshua during that time. He's taking them back to what our ancestor Masha, as people say Moses today. As he wrote down the things as far as the law is concerned. We can see the righteousness of the law being applied to what the king is speaking. So he's reminding them and pointing them to the commandment, the precept. You shall not commit adultery. Now let's see how he expounds on that commandment to the audience. Listen carefully. That a lot of us as individuals are struggling with. Verse 28. He says, but I say unto you that whosoever look on a woman to lust after her have committed adultery with her already in his heart. 
You see what our master is doing? Looking at a woman, or for those of you women, when you look at a man, there's nothing evil. Nothing evil at all. If you're walking and someone stops you or they're trying to engage with you as far as speak to you, it doesn't mean that we have to walk around and we, and we cannot even look at them. But notice how in the translations that we're reading from, and many of you have many translations out there, but listen carefully. Notice how he says, but I say unto you that whosoever look on a woman to lust, there's a difference. See, he's dealing with the intent. He, notice how he's dealing with, thank you, my father, my king. He's talking, he's pointing us to the commandment. We should not commit adultery. But notice how he's going to expound on the very things that will cause someone to commit that act. And notice how what he's dealing with is lust. See, this is the key we got to focus on. There's a lot of people who say they're Christians today who are struggling with lust. There's a lot of people who say they're Muslims today who are, who are, focus, who are basically they're focusing on lust and they're struggling with it. Those of you who say that you're Jewish and whatever religious factions that you all, you know, have cleaved to, you many of you are dealing with this key principle that's causing you to struggle. And it's called lust. Listen. But I say unto you that whosoever look on a woman to lust after her committed adultery with her already in his heart, meaning the mind. Because if you allow lust to birth in you and you have consumed and you begin to look at the individual and this goes for women too. Don't think Yahushua, even though he's speaking the way that the, the uh, translation is, is pertaining to looking on a woman and I'm not, thank you Father Marquis, help me not to add to your word. He's also dealing with the fact of how lust regardless of what gender you are do you see this? Because you have many uh, women who are struggling with this issue as well. And if you don't repent, you're going to be dealt with as well. So even though he's speaking this, as far as how the translation is concerned, the context is dealing with adultery and lust. Do you see this? And it involves more than one person. Do you understand? Thank you, my father, my king. So if you're not careful, and if those of us, if we don't allow the master to teach us what our problems are, if we do not master it, because they've given us the ability to master it. If you don't, uh, if you don't master it, then what will happen is that that lust will birth into you to where you will actually, it's only a matter of time before you begin to actually act out what's inside of you. There's not an adulterous person who is alive or who have lived that have not dealt with lust. The reason why they have done the act is because lust, they allowed it to be birthed in them and they did not master it. And this is why it overcame them and they were given over to it and they actually manifested and did what they, needed, what they wanted to do. Or how they felt they needed to do. You see this? Listen. Listen carefully. This is powerful. Because see, our Father King is dealing with the issues that's causing the sin. Verse 29. He says, and if your right eye offend you, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is profitable for you that one of your members should perish and not that your whole body should be cast into hell or Gehenna. And you have many who have missed understood what our master has said and they thought that our master was basically saying to poke out your eyes or cut your hand off. No. Our father king has already spoken a revelation on that on their teaching the commandments of Yahuwah through Yahushua. If those of you, you can search and, and find their revelation. Not mine, but you can find their revelation on, on regarding this passage of, of uh, expounding of the scripture that our master is talking about. He's not talking about cutting off your physical arm or plucking out your eyes. Notice that the context has to do with what? Adultery. So the, the idiom and how he is speaking is applied to adultery, which involves more than one person. Do you see this? 
He's telling you, if look at it closely, and if your right eye offend you, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is profitable for you that one of your members should perish and not that your whole body should be cast into hell. Listen, and verse 30, and if your right hand offend you, cut it off and cast it from you. For it is profitable for you that one of your members should perish and not that your whole body should be cast into hell. See, what he's dealing with is how we can allow people to be connected with us. We can allow people to become one with us. And if we are not careful, they can draw us to a fence pertaining to disobeying him. So what he's saying is cast them off. It's more profitable for them to perish than for you. This is what he's telling us. You have to be able to understand what our king is speaking as he was inspired by his heavenly father. You have to grow to this revelation, my family. Thank you, my father, my king. Now let's go back to the Didache. So we, so far we've learned you will not murder you will not commit adultery. Now listen to this carefully. Because there's a lot of people, especially in religious organizations, who are struggling with this particular commandment. Now let's listen carefully. You will not corrupt boys. This is what my translation says. I have the, the uh, one of the translations I have is the Didache translated by Aaron Millivet. Many of you who may have different translations of it, it may read a little different. But what it's, the context is as far as sexually corrupting young boys, sexually perverting children. And we and those of you who can agree that there are many instances where you have those who pick up the scriptures and they say that they're representing our heavenly father and his son. But behind closed doors, they're sexually abusing the youth. Hmm. And if you don't repent of your wicked ways, woe be unto you because our Heavenly Father and our King has something for you in the judgment. And not just in religious areas, but those of you who are doing, uh, please guide my Father and my King. 